So let's do uh, new products. Okay. It is now time. We have a lot. For new products. They're, they're quick, but they're okay. a lot. Okay. We can do this. All right. Okay. First up, lots of XBs. Yeah, I'll show all the XBs up on the um, on the overhead. Okay. Real fast. You want to go to so, the overhead? Yeah, because it's all the show. Okay. So, so we um we've always carried the 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 XB series one, um which has been great, but um. We also wanted to uh, extend our collection, and uh, Digi was really kind, and they and they kind of said, oh, you know, like, to you know, the pricing isn't that great on XBs, but tell you what, we'll uh, we'll give you uh, a deal if you you know carry all of the the XBs, and we're like, okay, sure, and so um, that worked out, and so we have um, the XB Series One Pro, and I love the Series Ones, and it comes with a wire antenna. Which I think is kind of like your your best bet because it's low power um, and it, it's all in one and it's it's better range than the chip antenna. And then um, I might show how to upgrade it to the UFL connection because it's it's pretty easy to do that. And then um, there's the XB uh, Series Two uh, Pro and uh, Plane, and um, the Series Two uses Zigbee, so it's not um, it's not like the 802.15.4, which is a kind of the, this, their own little mm -hmm. XB protocol. It actually is like I mean, it uses the Zigbee protocol, which Means it has, slight, I think, it has slightly lower power, slightly better range. It's not that much different, but um, we've noticed that more people are using the series two. I actually prefer the series one because it has like more A to Ds, and uh, I think it works. It's a lot easier if you have two XB series one in a room. They will automatically sync up together and, and form a link, so you don't have to like set them up and configure them. The series two, you do have to configure them. And you have to set up a coordinator and then like what kind of mesh network you want. They're good for mesh networks, but I find that a lot of people don't need actually need mesh networks. So, um, but, you know, people want them, so we have uh, we have both types, and uh, they all work great. Um, remember that Series 1 can only talk to Series 1, Series 2 can only talk to Series 2. Yeah. So if you have a, have, a, have a network already up, you can only use the series that you're using, but you can mix and match pros and non-pros. Okay, next up. Okay, so as far as... Um, you know, nice photos of all these. By the way, yeah, we're doing it. Um, we, yeah, uh, Becky took these photos, I believe. So I want to show these nice photos. Um, because this is new for us um, in our store, we decided to stock a book that basically uh, covers a lot of it. So Rob Faludi's book, yeah, um, who uh, yeah, right was on ISP, was instructor, and, and Digi. Digi hired him, which was probably the most brilliant thing. They started this Tumblr, which has all these great projects. Uh, him and Matt Richardson do this examples.digi.com yeah. site with cool examples. And so this book, if you're going to get these things, we don't have tutorials for some of these yet, you should get this book. It's that good. Okay. And uh, we're going to keep going. Okay, next up we have this um, really, really neat uh, microscope stand for our USB uh, microscope. We're actually going to have a video of this next yeah. week, so I'm not going to show it in detail right now, um, but it's a it's a cool uh, USB stand. We'll have a video to demo because it's, it's it, you know, you have to twist around and stuff, but basically, if you have one of our USB microscopes and you kind of didn't like the stand because it's a kind of a basic stand, yeah. this stand is awesome. We have like a box of stands. Um, this one was the only one that passed our rigorous stand. Yeah. And the way it works stand. is really neat. Standards. It's like a little cool little robot arm. Okay, yeah. we're gonna keep moving. Um, this is nice for Arduino R3 owners. Yeah, so if you have an Arduino R3 or um, Leonardo or Mega R3. Um, you'll notice that uh, there, there are now more pins. So instead of having uh, two 6-pin connectors and two 8-pin connectors, it now has a 10-pin, uh, a 6-pin, and two 8-pin connectors. So um, not all of our shields are fully R3 pinout compatible, um, but a couple of them are, the um, LCD shield and the NFC RFID shield. And any new shields that we're coming out with will uh, be R3 compatible. And so we, have, we upgraded our, our pack of stacking headers to now include a 10-pin, so now they can be used with either, if you have it old, use the 2.8 and 2.6. If you have a new, uh, leave the 6 for something else. So it's, uh, yeah, you get yeah. more. Okay. Uh, more. Someone wants to know, are you keeping the R2 headers in stock? Uh, these are, it's upgraded. It's the same product, okay. but now it comes with an extra And then someone wants to know, uh, how about a stacking header for the ISP header? Um, none of our shields use that, so we haven't decided to carry it. But you okay. could uh, cut the 6-pin in half and then, you know, use that. Yeah. We have uh, little clippers for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, next up, we got these buttons, 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 buttons. People have kept asking for these, and we got them. Yeah, so these buttons, and I'll show them on the overhead. Okay, they're, uh, we're go the overhead. they're very overheady. Okay. Um, so um, we had uh, buttons. Hey, uh, that's where it went. Yeah. <laughs> so we had these uh, on off buttons, and we only had them in green. And then we had momentary buttons. But people were like, well, I want the on off buttons in all colors. We're like, well, okay. 
so we finally got in our order and so this is an on off button so you can see when i press it it stays uh depressed so it's not momentary it's actually a switch yeah and there's an led on the back and so there's a full um switch with all the contacts and also uh the led is separated so you can have the LED on when you switch it, or off when you switch it, or any configuration you want because it's free, it's completely free for you to wire. So yeah. this is white, and I really like it. It's this beautiful, cool white they're ring. They're gorgeous. This, these were featured, I believe, on our show and tell with Chris's uh, project. Yeah, and they're also yeah. waterproof, and they're made out of uh, like a chrome steel. Yeah. And this is a uh, red. So you got red. Yeah, straight off this, the Blade Runner set, they look like they're really nice. And then we've got blue. We already had green. Will we ever carry any really small waterproof buttons? These are about as small as they get. Yeah. This is you gotta jam a lot of stuff in there. Yeah. So, yeah. The but nice thing, about, the nice thing about, about these is that you know there's a there's a there's a they come actually with a gasket. I didn't bring the gasket. Does it need no ring and is it stainless steel? It comes with an O ring. Uh, they're as far as I know, I think they're stainless steel. They're they're chrome plated steel or stainless steel. I don't know exactly, yeah. but um, they're waterproof. They're um, they're chromed, uh, and yeah, they've got the full five contacts, and you can check the product page for full dimensions, yeah. which has dimensions of all the, uh, the um, Someone mentioned RGB buttons. You know, that's a little bit difficult for this type of thing. Yeah, there, there's no RGB buttons. Yeah. There's only uh, solid color, but uh, these look great. So yeah. um, you can, can always crack one open and hack it. That might be fun. Okay, next up. Won't be waterproof anymore. Uh, it wouldn't be waterproof anymore. We got this chip. Look at this. It's a chip. This <laughs> is a yeah. This is a basic chip, but uh, people were wanting to you know want our solenoids and stuff, and we're like, well, you know, we should probably carry some sort of driver chip. Yeah. Uh, so this is an eight-channel Darlington with um, uh, uh, built-in um, uh, diodes. Uh, what's it called? Uh, kickback diodes. Uh, so you get eight channels. Um, they're really easy to connect. I think it drives up to 40 uh, volt outputs and uh, up to like 500 milliamps. So it's great for like anywhere solenoids or even um, small DC motors. Uh, basically, just like beefs up your outputs. It's really good if you have a, you know an Arduino and you want to drive um, a big output, or if you have a Raspberry Pi and you want to drive something. Yeah. And, and it's nice because the pins uh, they're they're parallel, so the input is on the opposite side of the output, so it's really easy to wire it up. And you just have a common ground. Yeah. It. Okay. Uh, next up, I like these because uh, I was looking around for um, servo cables, and uh, there's nothing good out there. And you know, grab a servo so I yeah, and you're going to get a servo. Oh, yeah, um, and I have one right here. And we finally um, got what exactly what we wanted. And uh, if you look around, these uh, these are really nice. These are so nice, and they work. They work. So the nice thing about these servo cables, we got two sizes because we couldn't decide whether people want yeah, 50 yeah. or 60 or 50 or 30. So they're um, they're super flexible, uh, so you can like get them into like any they're like the soft they're not uh, solid core they're stranded core and um, on the inside it's really hard to see but in the inside there's three little pins that stick out so all you have to do is you grab your existing servo and you um, snap it in and you don't need any other components or parts and the wa water uh, the wire colors even match up so you get red black and white. And you've got your servo here, and then on the other side, you've got your servo connector. So this is really good if you uh, are using, like, you know, a motor shield, or if you're using um, our servo driver board. And we've got two sets. We've got uh, 30, which is about, like, 12 inches, and 50, which is about 20 inches. So use whichever one you need. But, yeah, these are nice. Yeah. Soft flex, well, not too heavy, so they're good for uh, your projects if you need so a little bit more range. Someone mentioned first robotics folks are going to love these because, it's you know, basically that's what they're trying to do all the time is connect. Yeah. Around. And uh, some first folks already bought some and already emailed. It was that fast. Really? So they, yeah, it's like as if they were waiting for these to finally okay, come out. Okay, we got some uh, panel mount stuff. Uh, these are panel mount USB cables. Yeah, hold on, let me put my server away. These are super nice. I gotta put these server cables. Okay, uh, so yeah, we, uh, we had the A type and the Ethernet type and the B type, and people are like, well, yeah. okay, but I have like mini B or micro B. Ah, there. So um, we have extended. Can you uh, pass me some scissors? So I can scissors, bag. okay. Yeah, because i got to open this. These are in the bag. i got to open the bag. We used to have a whole big cup of pens. Now it's a whole big cup of scissors. Yeah, well, you know. I'd rather <laughs> yeah. have scissors and pens. Huh. So these are um, they're a little bit short, but that's good because you want to put them in an enclosure or something. So on one end is a micro USB connector, and their hand is a, on the other side is a B. And then uh, you take these screws and you put them on the other side, and uh, they have little captive hex nets. So you can attach this panel mount. It's not waterproof, but um, just you know, you'd need like a full attachment system to make it waterproof. But uh, you know, it's a good way to, to connect to something that's in a box. So you've got we have a mini B version. This one's a micro yeah. B. Uh, they're about six inches long. 
Um, and uh, you can't get panel mount with a micro B connector, like it doesn't really exist. But these are really good solid connectors. This actually is better because this is a good, if you're going to attach the outside of the box. Yeah, and that's plus solid. you're going to be doing it all the time and it'll probably get knocked and everything. Micro tends to pop off. and. Yeah, the micro connectors yeah. are they're, they're not really meant to be bent and stuff with it. These USB are nice, chunky connectors. So I, that's why we picked B on this side and then micro and mini on yeah. the other side. So we have both, mini and micro. Okay, so you got that? Yes. All right. Thanks let's let's uh, and I'll just show you two nice photos. Two nice photos. So yeah, nice. these are good for nice teensies or FTDI friends or Raspberry Pi or Leonardo. Anything you want yeah. to place in a box where you don't want. Here's a couple more photos in um, action. Yeah, you want to be people put an enclosure or something, or if you want to adapt it, I don't know. Yeah, I mean a lot of people are probably gonna put a Raspberry Pi inside of like a, a keyboard or a thing, and you'll want to have panel mount stuff to plug into it. Yeah, because there's a connector on every side, yeah. so like, you can't you can't have all sides. Okay. Okay, and then um, next up, um, we're in we're in the Pi zone kind of right now. Um, these little USB uh, Wi-Fi adapters uh, are awesome. In yeah. fact, um, really they know. they're selling fast. Okay. Um, they're fantastic. We fully tested they're by so us. Small. We really like them. Super tiny, super useful. Yeah. You want to show the other right? end? Yeah. yeah. So um, the these are the this is the little. Uh, they're they're small, but I actually I, I tested a lot of them, and actually these had really good range. So they, they not all small adapters have the same range. Um, but this one I found worked really well, and so I've got it hooked up here. Uh, it has a little blue LED in it. You can kind of see it's flickering a little bit. It, it when it's you know working, it flickering or sends data or receives data. I don't know. The blue LED turns on to so let you know you have a link. Um, it works perfectly with Occidental. It also wor works with the BeagleBone. Um, it's a it's a really good adapter, and uh, I've, I've been running this connection for like a couple days, and it's it's super yeah. solid on the Pi. And then here's the uh, demo of. Um, the uh, seven segment display running using only two wires on the Pi and, and it's showing the time. the time. Yeah. So this is super neat. This is a fully portable, I mean, it's running off a battery. Yeah, I've got to connect up to the yeah. battery pack. I mean, like, let's, uh, let's, let, here, can I, can I see Okay, you? bye. Yeah, just to show this real quick, like, you know, it's all it's wireless. Wireless. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I have an SSH in from the, from the other uh, side of the room yeah, to run cool. the demo. Okay. But it's great. Let's keep moving along. And uh, we'll try to carry more, uh, you know, bigger antenna yeah. versions. But for now, uh, this little one actually works pretty well. Like, like I, I you know, in uh, we tried in the office, and we could see like pretty much everything, even like the yeah. same networks that we could see in the same range that we would yeah. with a larger adapter. All right, more adaptery stuff. Adapters, yeah. So this is a USB to PS2 adapter, and inside is actually a little chip that does like a little microcontroller that has like a USB client. And then you can connect a keyboard and mouse. And um, this is good. I thought, like, uh, people who did Raspberry Pi stuff and they wanted to have a, a mouse and a keyboard connected only using one USB port. And, like, you have old computer stuff kicking around and yeah. you want to recycle it. Uh, this is a really good use for it. Also, if you want to use our um, MagStripe reader, which is PS2, you can use yeah. uh, with this. Uh, someone wants to know, is it possible to remote access Raspberry Pi and program it remotely? Absolutely. Yep, that's actually one of the things that we That's That's what I do show. every day. Yeah, that's what you do a lot. Okay, next up. Um, we've got these cool connectors. I was I was pushing for these. You asked for this. These are so useful for so many things, especially when you have little tiny devices and you need to get USB cables um, uh, yeah. with them. If you have a regular laptop, sometimes you have peripherals that won't fit in because there's, they're, they're Yeah, I was big. actually looking at the, so the, the USB to PS2 adapter. It's not like lumpy, but it like sticks out a lot. Yeah. So maybe you want it to stick up. So I'm going to show something. Right yeah, these, it's weird to understand These are so here. useful. I've traveled with these for years in my bag. And uh, it's yeah, great to have like them to start. So yeah. this is um, so yeah. So normally you can just plug into a USB connector, but this is like a, a a flexi thing where you can you can bend it 90 degrees this way, 90 degrees this way, and then 90 degrees this way, and yeah. then 90 degrees this way, and then you can do both at the same time. So you can like have it like do this, which is kind of yeah. weird. Like, eh, hey, what's weird? Going on 45 degrees. Given the trend of like small Linux boards, dev boards. Yeah. You know, you're going to always need to be plugging in lots of USB stuff, and, like, because every cable is different, like, you're going to be yeah, slicing like them down or we something. Have, we always have, like, like especially, yeah. um, like, USB keys. Sometimes they can be, like, really big. Yeah. Not not so much anymore, but, or, like, um, some Wi-Fi adapters. So if you want them to stick up or out. So we have these, and they're, they're pretty simple, okay. but useful. We're going to keep moving along. Um, we put in the um, Raspberry Pi starter pack. Budget pack. Uh, uh, sorry, budget pack. And uh, it got too popular, and uh, we sold out of them all um, fast. Uh, so we're not going to spend any time on this, other than we've got them. Uh, we're going to have them back in stock I'll soon. Try to have some more. Too. Yeah. Um, and then our uh, wrapping up the hopefully the new products in a second here. Or if, uh, we developed this new product. These are two new. These are kind of 
Not out yet. Yeah, this is... You can um, kind of ask, but they're yeah, not showing out yet. So one of the bits of feedback about the Raspberry Pi that people had was the, the card sticks out. So we made this neat um, adapter that has a micro SD that goes in so it's, it's flush, so you can see how um, yeah. it doesn't stick out. Uh, here's the nice graphic that Becky made. Nice Becky. work, Becky. Yeah, and then here's how you can see it uh, in the device. So let me uh, go to, you want to go to the overhead? Yeah, because I, I have it here because I've been demoing it. Right? I have to know if it works. So yeah, yeah here it is. Um, so it does stick out a little bit, but much, much less. Like normally it would be sticking out like pretty much all the way to the end of the um, Yeah, and the for some applications here. it doesn't work out. Oh, yes, and it fits our case. Yeah, it fits in our case, and uh, it, it, it's uh, basically this is what it is. It's, it's a uh, micro SD card holder on a SD card shaped PCB, and it's got the contacts on the bottom. And then, uh, so instead of, you know, it's got the same shape as the, the big card, but it's about a third of the length, and so you can take out your micro SD and yeah. uh, pop it in. And um, I'm not going to do it to this because this is running, but you can pop out the card. Yeah, Very we have this, these nice little it's holders got, that, got the that push, 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 spring action. Push, push connection. So if you're interested, sign up. Um, we're not sure exactly the price, but it's going to be about under $5. It, it'll be under $5. It'll be under $5. You've heard it here first. We can't go back on it now. It will not be over $5. It will, it will not be, be under over $5. $5. Yeah. And less than that. And uh, would it fit in the case if you didn't cut the SD hole in the side? Um, I don't, don't know. know. Yeah, I don't know. We have to experiment with that. Um, yeah. All our cases are going to have the SD hole, so. Yeah. Okay, and then um, next up, we're pleased to announce that um, Pibo, the very colorful case that um, a lot of people like, um, will be in the Adafruit store soon. Um, we chatted with the folks over there. They're making them as we speak. They got a note. They got. They have multiple lasers for this. Those are the instructions, and they're going to um, have us uh, become a reseller in the U.S. The person persons who designed the Raspberry Pi logo. Um, also work on this case. That's why you can see the Raspberry Pi yeah. logo. Um, the Raspberry Pi folks were very smart when they started. They had a list of all the things that you're, that's okay to do with the logo and not okay. Yeah. And uh, you can uh, maybe ask permission for some stuff. You can uh, reference it in a certain way. Um, in this particular case, this is, these are the folks or the person who designed the logo. So that's this is one of the few. That's why cases. we don't have the Raspberry Pi logo on our case because mm -hmm. we're not. Yeah. No, we have to. We respect yeah. everybody's trademarks, and if we ever use anything uh, like our badges, we always seek permission. Yeah. First. Yeah, we have permission. So, anyways, uh, this will be in the store soon. Um, it's uh, I think 19.95 uh, yes. is the cost, and they're coming over soon. So yes. sign up for those. Those are going to go fast. So those are new products. From across the pond. We just got those. That's a lot new of stuff. Products. This desk is like full of things.